Hello, I'm Ken Li. In this video, I'd like to give you a short presentation about my research on sound zones. This might be your first time to hear about sound zones or sound zone control. So let me give you an example that you might have encountered in your life. Imagine you are with your friend to watch a movie together. You want to watch that movie with Danish. Your friend is with English. Then. You might end up with watching the movie like this. That's you saying if you can add don't you say anything there fast? I pull the L so anyone can be anybody will. Yes, we have interferences here. So what sound control is doing is using a number of loud speakers to create multiple listening zones at the same time. In this example, it creates English speech zone and Danish speech zone at the same time. Using state-of-the-art methods, we can obtain around 15 dB of contrast between two zones, which means interferences still occur. Still, the state-of-the-art methods give up to 15 dB of contrast. So in fact, people have looked into that how much do we actually need. It is believed that we need at least 25 dB of contrast. Of course, we could add more loud speakers. But here, we think we can do something else that makes 15 dB more than enough. It is based on perceptual audio coding, and it has been shown three decades ago that 13 dB is enough. To illustrate this, two audio examples are here. On the left hand side, it is where the sound zones are at the moment. Well, are you saying that because it's a sloth, he can't be fast? I found Zootopia, anyone could be anything. We are not trying to improve contrast. Instead, we shape the interferences so that we cannot hear it as we do in perceptual audio coding. Well, are you saying that because he's a sloth, he can't be fast? I found Zootopia, anyone could be anything. So the question is that, is there 13 dB miracle for sound zones? Yes, then how do you do this? First, we have to design filters for each loudspeaker per audio input. We have realized that it can be done by using techniques from speech enhancement called optimal filtering. To calculate these filters, we have to compute generalized eigenvalue decomposition first. Then the filter tries to do two, two things at the same time. First, it maximizes the contrast between two zones. Second, it minimizes the, minimizes the distortion or reproduction error at the, um, in two zones. This approach is very flexible, so we could cooperate with perceptual audio coding so that the reproduction error can be shaped perceptually. To demonstrate this, two video examples are here. The first one is a result from an existing method, and the second one is a result from our approach. Are you saying that because it's a sloth, he can't be fast? I found Zootopia, anyone could be anything. Are you saying that because it's a sloth, he can't be fast? I found Zootopia, anyone could be anything. Can you feel the differences? We can expect the same result for Danish case. This can be applied not only for home theaters, theater, living rooms, applications, but also for car cabins, outdoor stages, room corrections, or noise cancellations as well. Once this technology is matured, yes, then we can enjoy the individualized audio in a social setting. Thank you for your attention.